Good morning, degenerates, and welcome to another episode of Boring Crypto IO, the place where I read you the boring crypto news every morning, Monday through Friday, just so you don't have to. My name is not important. Let's do it. DOJ wants SBF bail revoked over witness tampering diary leak allegations. Kansas Heartland Tri-State Bank closed by FDIC as banking crisis deepens. And Coinbase CEO says SEC told it to delist everything but Bitcoin. Wah, 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 wah. This dude. This dude. Oh, man, oh, man. But we're going to get to it in just a second. Before we go on to the charts, to the market, to the news, let me just start off by saying a big and awesome thank you to everybody that has been uh, slowly, um, creeping into my channel. Um, I just looked this morning and we have broke a hundred subscribers. We are sitting at 101. Uh, thank you each and every one of you, um, for watching and helping this channel grow. Um, we are, you know, I am, we, I don't know. We're a group. I hope you guys are getting good information from this channel. That's the whole point. I'm doing this to help bring uh, more awareness to the crypto space and to just get more news out there. Um, I am a very opinionated person, but I try my best to not sway off the rails too often um, and give my opinions too much. I'd rather this just be about the news um, and not necessarily like, you know, your, your, your basic trading channel, things like that. I just want to get some news to you guys. Keep everybody updated on what's going on in the crypto space. Um, and that's about it. And if you appreciate that, I, I think that's why you're here. And I appreciate you guys. So, uh, big mile marker, you know, first hundred subscribers. It's awesome. Um, thank you. That's all I really want to say <laughs> in a big, long winded way, but thank you. So let's get to the market. Current market cap guys sitting at 1.18 trillion. Current Bitcoin dominance 48.3 slowly slipping still. ETH dominance at 19.0 and 23 way will get you an ETH transaction. Fear and greed ticked up to 52. I think it was at 51 on Friday, if I remember correctly. If not, I'm dumb. Don't pay attention to me. What's new? Um, <clears throat> but we've been hovering around this this 55, 50 and 55 for uh, probably the better part of a month now. Excuse me. Not much change in the fear and greed. Um, what does that mean? I don't even know. I don't even know where they get. Like, honestly, I have no idea where they get the parameters for fear and greed index. Um, <clears throat> So basically just uh, RSIs. <laughs> if something's over, if we're oversold, um, it's greed. If we're overbought, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should look into it one day, but I'm kind of lazy, so who knows. All right, current market right now, kind of looking sideways after Bitcoin. Um, got a little volatile last night. Had a little bit of a, a tantrum, then calmed down. But right now, yeah, not too much going on that I could see. Um, it does look red, but I mean, look at these reds. These are, you know, 1%, things like that. Uh, and then anything that's big, I'm seeing like fours and fives. So not, nothing too crazy. Uh, that's why I'm saying kind of sideways still. Nothing too big on the daily. 7.7 .7 for optimism. Up 7.7. .7. Aave down 4.2. BSV up almost 11% on the day. Why? Curve down 12.7%. Gotta like the silence. The silence is, is deafening when you're trying to make a video. Uh, Frax share? I've never even heard of that. Down 6.28%. Yep, that's about it, guys. Let's just go ahead and go. And, let's go ahead and get on to Bitcoin and continue. All right. So when I left you guys on Friday, this is what I was looking at. We had our channel. Um, we broke out of the channel, created a potential double bottom, which I told you, and we did. We pumped up out of that double bottom. <clears throat> which again, now here is here's why I always tell you guys: be prepared for the up or the down. Every Every pattern 
has a potential to move up or down. It's just a percentage based on what it usually goes, which direction based on the pattern, right? This could have potentially been a huge, well, not huge, we're on a one hour time frame, but for a one hour time frame, a huge uh, bear flag. Or, like I said, a double bottom, which is a reversal pattern, right? Bear flag would be a continuation pattern, rollover, continue down to the downside, double bottom, reversal pattern, moves the upside. So we got the double bottom, it pumped back into the channel. Now I thought that we'd probably just come, I mean, we respected this trend line heavily on the one hour. And I figured if we pump back into the channel, we'd just continue the pattern, right? We didn't, we, we pumped back into it and fell right back out of it. Um, then what I started seeing is 29.3 holding pretty well as support. Just kind of waving it, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and then around like last night, yesterday, this is where we started getting really weird and volatile. Um, we pumped back above it. Now we're kind of setting up a, a, a bull flag on the one hour. I would keep your, my eyes on this for a potential, a potential move. Um, but this 29.3 is looking like decent support. And I started playing with stuff. I've seen other people on other channels doing like a big wedge like this or something that we eventually broke out of that we're kind of now riding the top of doing a retest. That's a potential. Um, I saw some guy doing something weird like this using this wick. Uh, doing something like this. I, I mean, that's. I mean, maybe that, that, that if this did play out, this would be your retest. We're eventually going to go to the upside. Um, but I, I started messing around with things. That I it, it was just looking very unstructured, right? So then I backed out to the four hour. So you're you're probably if you're new to the space, you're new to trading, um, which this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't a trading channel. I just like to show you guys what I'm looking at. I'm not even a good trader. Half the time I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, so don't listen to me. <laughs> With that being said, you're gonna hear something in the, in the space, uh, when in doubt, back out, right? So we've been looking at the one hour for the last week and a half, just because that's where the only action's really been. What does that mean? If the smaller time frames, frames are the only place you're seeing action, price movement, well, back out, right? Let's stretch this out. Back out to the four hour. And I did this this morning. What does that look like to you? Without the, without, let's, let's remove this. Let's remove our bear flag. Or, yeah, bear flag and our double bottom. What's that look like? Well, to me, it looks like sideways action. Looks like price consolidation and just sideways movement, right? Boring, 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 boring. Um, and this is something you'll find that'll happen a lot in the space. Um, when Bitcoin's not moving, you'll be looking at it and you're looking for patterns. You're looking for patterns. You're looking for, for some kind of setup. And then you back out and you're like, oh, we're just ranging. We're not doing anything. Right. We're just moving sideways. And yes, you can play these swings. If you're looking to do some swing trades, right? This is just the four hour. Probably looks even worse on the eight hour. Uh, my point, if you're, if you're like ripping your hair out, looking for a trade, looking for a, um, a setup and you're in smaller time frames, when in doubt back out and just, I mean, the price action is boring. So for last, what was this dump? On 24th. So seven days. So basically a solid week of just sideways movement is what we've been looking at. And it feels like a lot, but without this wick, like the bottom, we went down to 28.8, wicked up to 29.6. So we're basically in a thousand dollars worth of movement for Bitcoin, which isn't a lot. So it's just boring. 
Um, when in doubt, back out. And I even have to tell myself that. And I did. And I look at the four hour and it's just, that's, it's just boring sideways movement. That's all we're seeing right now. I, uh, yes, I expect a, a move coming, um, in the near future, but don't forget how long we did that. We did it here. It took us about a week, week and a half before we dumped. And then, and then don't forget about this. What was this? This is a whole month. This is a solid month of sideways action. Now, mind you, there's these swings in here, right? But it, this on a bigger time scale, let's go let's look at this on a daily. Uh, let's go to 12 hour. Let's go, this is just sideways action. Now, this is interesting. Looking at this on the 12 hour, on the 12 hour, this could potentially be a, a very large bear flag, right? Bear flag is basically just an upside down bull flag in case you don't know. Um, so I would keep my eye on that as well. The 12 and the four, the four, just to watch the price action of where it might be going. If you're going to play the swings from the top to the bottom of, of the sideways movement, 12 for this potential bear flag that we're staring at right now keep all of that in mind outside of that that's all i've got for you for bitcoin guys um again it's just boring not a lot going on um i know some i uh, alts are, i do know that some alts are moving i've been seeing people talk about it so maybe as bitcoin ranges uh there's a potential for a mini altcoin uh cycle keep your eye on your alts but also keep an eye on Bitcoin because if it dumps, alts will bleed like it's nobody's business. I don't think anything uh, has changed with that narrative in the space um, until it does. Always keep your eye on Bitcoin as a barometer of what's going to happen. So let's move on to the news. DOJ wants SBF bail revoked over witness tampering diary leak allegations. The filing revealed on January 15th, 2023, SBF contacted the current general counsel of FTX US who could potentially serve as a witness in the trial. This is shady dude. He, this dude, I don't, do I think he's gonna go to jail? I don't know, but I think he's been given a lot of leeway to do whatever the hell he wants for someone who is up against some very serious charges. Uh, according to a July 28th court filing, the United States Department of Justice is seeking a Revocation of Sam Bankman Freed's bail, accusing him of attempting to tamper with witnesses and leaking Caroline Ellison's diary to the New York Times. The GOJ, the, the DOJ noted the SBF, too many acronyms, guys, I'm sorry, noted that SBF was released on a bond on December 22nd of 2022, but later requested multiple bail modifications, according to the filing on January 15th of 2023. The defendant reached out to the current general counsel of FTX US via email and the encrypted messaging application signal. In the communication, SBF expressed a desire to reconnect and explore the possibility of establishing a constructive relationship. He inquired about potential of using each other as resources and providing mutual input on various matters. This dude is acting like he's still in business. Um, SBF also allegedly used signal for obstructive purposes with the app's auto deletion feature uh, complicating the investigation, the court expressed concerns regarding the potential risk of witness tampering in light of the defendant's behavior. Why is this guy even allowed to do things like this? Get rid of his phone. Get rid of his computer. Don't give him internet. Why, like, this is absolutely insane. Like, they're, they're treating this dude like he's on a four star resort, five star resort, and he's just a pampered patron. Um, according to John Reek Stark, former U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's Office of Internet Enforcement, Chief Judge Lewis Kaplan has several options. He could view SBF's actions as an effort to improperly influence witnesses and choose to either make further modifications to his bail conditions or revoke his bail entirely. He argued that Kaplan would face a tough decision in this case. If SBF is permitted to stay free, the judge will likely re reiterate his previous warnings. The written submission comes after a July 26 hearing in a Manhattan court. U.S. Attorney Daniel uh, Sassoon requested uh, the 
revocation of SPS bail based on allegations he used his freedom to intimidate Ellison, his former romantic partner and colleague. So I soon informed the judge that SPF attempted to intimidate Ellison and made around 100 calls to a New York Times reporter. That's shady. Yeah, because supposedly she's got a plea deal and she's going to be testifying against him. Uh, in a July 20th complaint, the DOJ also leveled accusations against SPS for leaking Ellison's diary, accusing him of trying to publicly discredit a government witness by sharing her personal writings with a reporter. Yeah, lock this dude up. This is ab like this is bullshit. Put him in jail. Straight to jail. Moving on. Kansas Heartland Tri-State Bank closed by FDIC as bank crisis deepens. More banks are closing, guys. Wah, 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 wah. I don't know what to say. I think they're keeping a lot. Like, I don't see any of this stuff in the mainstream news. Oh, excuse me. They're trying to keep this stuff under wraps. They want you to think everything is a-okay. Continue kicking the can down the road. Heartland Tri-State Bank of Elkhart was closed on July 29th with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation taking control. Uh, the ongoing crisis surrounding the United States banking system stuck, struck again as Heartland Tri-State Bank of Elkhart was closed on July 29th by the Kansas Office of the State Bank Commissioner with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, taking control. On July 31st, the four branches of Heartland Tri-State Bank will reopen as branches of Dream First Bank what is Dream First Bank? That sounds shady. Under normal business hours, the FDIC noted that in a statement. <laughs> Depositors of the failed bank will become customers of Dream First Bank, meaning the withdrawals, deposits, and loan transactions will be processed through Dream First Bank. Customers of Heartland Tri-State Bank should continue to use their existing branch locations until the bank has completed the transaction transition. Heartland Tri-State Bank is the first bank to collapse since troubled First Republic Bank was acquired by JP Morgan. In May, after efforts to rescue the company failed, uh, it also follows a dramatic collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in March that triggered days of chaos in the US banking system. The Heartland Tri State Bank collapse also marks the second bank crisis of the week. On July 25th, Pac West merged with Bank of California, with both, both banks seemingly looking to shore up amid the banking industry turmoil. Uh, behind the bank's failures is believed to be rising U.S. interest rates, uh, along with poor risk management for financial institutions. The U.S. Federal Reserve increased its benchmark rate over the past year to 5.25% in July, the highest rate since 2007, in an effort to curb inflation in the country. In June, the inflation rate in the U.S. was 4.1% year over year. I don't trust any of those numbers personally. Heartland Tri-State Bank had approximately $139 million in total assets and 130 million in total deposits as of March. Along with deposits, Stream First Bank agreed to purchase all the failed bank assets. The FDIC estimates that the cost of the deposit insurance fund, the DIF, will be 54.2 million. The DIF is an insurance fund created by Congress in 1933 and managed by the FDIC to protect deposits in the nation's banks. Compared to other alternatives, Stream First Bank uh, National Association acquisition was the least costly resolution for the DIF said the FDIC sounds like a an 80s rap song uh, Democrats in the House Financial Services Committee introduced several bills in June and what they described as the first wave of legislation aimed at addressing failures at major banks the failures of Silicon Valley Bank, Central Bank and First Republic Bank made clear that it is past time for legislation aimed at strengthening the safety and soundness of our banking system and enhancing bank executives accountability let's take a small pause right here don't forget that they're all they're all in cahoots these are the same people that put fractional reserve banking into place which causes this as well as during COVID, i think they launched zero reserve banking which even made this worse meaning they don't have to have any of your money on hand in the bank zero reserves that's insane all right. Uh, Representative Maxine Waters Congress must not sit by idly. By, uh, yeah. Well, it's all you guys doing this shit anyways. You're all working together. It's all a charade, man. These people, it's all theater. They get up there and act like they're appalled and like they're so surprised that this is happening. It's like, you guys caused this. 
you're the one who set all of this, these rules and laws into place for the banks. You're the one who, the Fed's the one who controls the interest rate. You guys know exactly what's going on. Such bullshit. All right. Last but not least, Coinbase CEO says SEC told it to delist everything but Bitcoin. These guys are out of their effing minds. Brian Armstrong claimed the SEC staff said all cryptocurrencies but Bitcoin are securities and requested the exchange delist all other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, um, that would totally just collapse Coinbase as, a, as an exchange anyways. Like, they can't do that. What do they do with all those assets? Because they're holding a ton too. It, this is, these people are crazy. Absolutely crazy. Crypto exchange Coinbase was once told by the United States Securities Regulator to delist cryptocurrencies on its platform except for Bitcoin. According to CEO Brian Armstrong, in a July 31st interview with the Financial Times, Armstrong revealed that the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission wanted the exchange to delist nearly 250 tokens on its platform prior to its filing a lawsuit against the exchange. At the time, the SEC reportedly said it believes every asset other than Bitcoin is a security, said Armstrong. Um, we said, well, how are you coming to that conclusion? Because that's not our interpretation of the law, Armstrong added. He recounted that the regulator said, we're not going to explain it to you. You need to delist every asset other than Bitcoin. Oh, so they're trying to push weight. Yeah, regulation by enforcement. Awesome. Uh, it's a similar view held by the SEC Chair, Gen Chair, Cherry? Chair Gary Gensler, who claimed in February, New York Magazine interviewed uh, that everything other than Bitcoin is security under the agency's remit. This dude is a turd. I hate, I hate, they always, they, I hate that they hide behind this. Um, there's nothing about the crypto securities, crypto securities market. This dude is even changing the terminology. There's nothing about the quote unquote cryptos securities markets that suggests that investors and issuers are less deserving of the protection of our securities laws. This is, this, this statement to me absolutely makes me want to vomit. These guys act like they're the gatekeepers to investing. And the way they 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 work their terminology, it's like they're the Marvel Universe coming to save the investor. We don't want your protection. Like who who like I keep saying this. Go I, I challenge you to go onto Gary Ginsler's Twitter and read the comments anytime he makes a post. Nobody wants you, dude. Nobody wants you here. We're fine. We get it. There's scams. We get rug pulled. It happens. It's up to us to do our own due diligence to handle that shit. And I think we can. I think we can just fine. This is this is so gross. These guys are not here to protect you. They're here to steal money. That's their only goal. And, and basically control you. Are less deserving of our protections of our securities laws. Go eat a D. Armstrong said that agreeing to the SEC's request could have set a precedent and would have essentially meant the end of crypto industry. I completely agree. In the United States, this dude is such a tool bag. Uh, it kind of made it an easy choice. Let's go to court and find out what the court says. The SEC sued Coinbase in early June, alleging that it operated as an unregistered exchange and named 30 cryptocurrencies it said Coinbase offered as unregistered securities. Days earlier, the regulator filed a similar complaint against Binance. Uh, the SEC told Financial Times its enforcement division does not make formal requests for companies to delist, delist crypto assets, but that its staff may share its view on what actions could violate securities laws. Crypto industry oversight in the U.S. hasn't landed on any one regulator, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and the SEC have both taken regulatory action against crypto industry players. Legislation that would mostly hand crypto jurisdiction to the CFTC and clarify the SEC's crypto-related role passed the House Agriculture Committee on July 27th after its early passage through the House Financial Services Committee. Um, yeah, this is uh, it, this is all the same stuff. It's nothing new, but the fact that this dude and his cronies keep making statements like this, investors and issuers 
are less deserving of our like we don't want you here nobody's begging you to come save them but we can't get rid of them because they're not elected officials awesome way to go America uh sorry really opinionated I hate this dude I hate everything he says Every, it, it just it's it, it, it sounds like he's talking about us as investors like peasants and like we're sitting we're going please come save us Mr. Gary dude kick rocks we all know what you're doing like I, I really do I challenge every if, if anybody's watching this I really challenge you go to his Twitter account and read the comments anytime he makes a post and you will see how absolutely hated this man and this uh uh um uh, the SEC is by the people. We do not want them. We do not like them. We do not trust them. Yet here they are saying they're here to save us. No one's asking for it, dude. All right. Let's look at Bitcoin one last time. Yep. In that range. 29384 is what we're sitting at. Uh, guys, that's all I've got for you this Monday morning. If you do enjoy the content I provide for here for you every morning on Boring Crypto IO, please by all means subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for notifications. Watch, like, and share. The videos on all of your social platforms, please. And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you for 101 subscribers. I am out of here. <laughs>